Yes, our next speaker is Dr. Manoj Komath, who is working as a G-level scientist in the Biomedical Technology Department at Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute for Medical Sciences and Technology, Tiruvannadaburam. He has more than 30 research papers in biomedical technology and 15 patents to his credit and has been honored with multiple awards in India as well as other countries. Dr. Manoj Komath is also an active science communicator and has been a prolific science writer of various books and articles in Malayalam for over three decades for which he was bestowed with the Science Literature Award by the Government of Kerala in the year 2012. The topic to be presented by Dr. Manoj Komath is the delusion of dilution in which he will be decoding the fallacies propagated as facts by the advocates of homeopathy. Please welcome Dr. Manoj Komath. A very good evening to all and uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, after listening to the introduction, you may be expecting a big uh, science lecture from me. Uh, anyway, I am not going to give a boring science lecture. Rather than um, uh, that, I will be uh, giving some ideas about uh, delusions in science, actually uh, self-criticism uh, of what is going on in science from the scientist's point of view. And actually, this is, there is a thread in, in this uh, that I will describe later on. The title is Delusion of Dilution. And this is a part of a back-to-back -back presentation. That is something new. Uh, and my um, co-presenter, uh, Arif Hussain, is here. He will be join, uh, join, uh, joining this session uh, soon after this presentation. And we have, a, uh, we have a common thread in this. But before that, uh, one part I will present like uh, delusion of dilution. And you may be surprised what it is. We will see one by one what are these uh, um, uh, uh, f uh, factors I am going to talk about. And all of us are here believing that uh, science is right. I don't think anybody, even a single person here, says uh, against that. Because we have learned the theories verified through practicals. We did practicals throughout uh, up to college who have studied uh, in, uh, science especially. Then we are sure that uh, science is right. And scientific temper, in the morning we had been uh, discussing at length what is scientific temper. And uh, in fact, scientific temper gives you uh, a kind of uh, world view of science. Means uh, you can set a world view of science. Or um, you can understand science in, a, in, a, in the right way. That's uh, uh, what's meant by scientific temper. And uh, exact definition and all and confusion, I'll come to that later. But uh, all of us know that uh, lack of scientific temper will lead to superstitions, no doubt about that. And here also, on the way or just uh, outside the road, you can see a lot many things like that. And uh, these are very classic uh, things. I am uh, just showing uh, as a uh, picture. And it can go up to any level. It can go up to any level, superstitions. And India is famous for that. And uh, these people who are um, uh, uh, keeping their superstitions may get into troubles by themselves in life. So that's shown in the cartoon. And we know that the people with a low level of uh, scientific temper fall prey to delusions. And all of us are free from such delusions, everybody sitting here. Okay, great. Now, a little bit, uh, little bit uh, uh, science, not necessarily science, a little bit about the solutions and uh, dilution. I'm just jumping into this topic. Uh, like uh, since uh, school class, you know how to make a solution. You take uh, water in glass, put some sugar and mix uh, thoroughly, you will get a solution, as simple as that. And if you add, uh, we have a so, uh, definitions like a solvent, solute, and, uh, and so on, and uh, concentration, all these things are there. So we studied that. And if you add uh, mm, the solvent more, then concentration will go down, and it's called dilution. So more the solvent, less the solute, and uh, more the dilution. And in practical purpose, so if anybody is here, uh, 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 which have gone through, I mean, who have gone through courses in biochemistry and uh, microbiology, in practical sense, we are making serial dilution in the lab. 
dilution is not a very uh, common I means uh, uh, thing to be discarded I mean, means uh, as simple uh, means addition of uh, sol uh, means, uh, solute into um, uh, solvent here we do uh, serial dilution like uh, a, a concentrated mother solution is there in that, uh, that red bottle we'll take a 1 ml of that and add to a test tube which contains 9 ml. So it will constitute a total 10 ml of a uh, one tenth dilution. And you take one ml of uh, th that solution and add to another 9 ml uh, solution, uh, means 9 ml um, uh, solvent in the uh, uh, test tube. Then you will get a 100 times uh, diluted. So you can go on adding like this. So you'll get uh, multiply diluted, 10 times 10 times diluted in this particular case, diluted uh, solution. So these are used to uh, know uh, like uh, blood or any other um, uh, testing um, uh, means uh, liquid, um, liquid. If you want to know the exact dilution, this is done in the lab practically. So how can you do that? Can, uh, how can you, I mean, so how far you can continue this? Can you go indefinite? So that's the question. But one, once uh, you know a little bit of chemistry, you'll understand that you, uh, if you go beyond 24 times like this, 10 times solution, that means uh, uh, 10 times uh, dilution, after 24 times, you will end up in a uh, solution in which a single molecule of the solute remain. Not, not even a single molecule will remain. Why? We know. The, there is a kind, kind of uh, number called Avogadro's number, uh, who was a good chemist, and uh, around 200 uh, years back, he has identified that uh, uh, the fixed volume of uh, any chemical will contain a certain number of atoms or molecules in it. So these things we know. And even those who don't know Avogadro number or serial dilution theory or anything, by experience, uh, they agree with this. So we know the theory, and uh, anybody can confirm that it's right. Pouring water into any, any solution, what will happen? Or pouring water into milk, or in daily life, uh, we have experienced uh, uh, what it is, that uh, case of dilution. Now we are coming to another case which you, which you acquaint in your daily life like homeopathy. Many of you might have gone for uh, homeopathic treatment. I have gone personally, long back. And uh, my co-presenter, next talk will be by a homeopath who had studied homeopathy. So in homeopathy, uh, the basic principle is that a substance creating certain uh, symptoms in human body, a healthy body, could be used to cure the same symptoms in a diseased body. So don't ask why, uh, what's the background of this invention and all, and uh, don't ask why uh, this is done and all. So what they are doing, Hahnemann, Samuel Hahnemann identified that uh, the original substance which creates uh, symptoms and which could be used for uh, uh, a cure of those symptoms should be diluted, should be diluted. And the background and all, uh, my uh, friend Dr. Arif will tell in the next uh, session. So take mother tincture, take one drop in 99 drops uh, uh, solvent, then shake it very well. And in between, we have to um, uh, shake very well and uh, just uh, um, uh, um, impact it onto the table uh, like that. Some process is there called the succussion. And if you go on diluting, according to Samuel Hahnemann, the more is the healing power of this medicine. And don't ask how and why. If you ask, you will be in trouble. And my colleague had been in trouble, uh, and he has to pay a lot. Uh, he'll come to that later on. So we'll come to the, 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 the their practice, their serial dilution, how they are doing. Uh, t uh, take 1% uh, uh, solution of uh, the uh, mother tincture, then again uh, one part in 99-part uh, 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 solvent, maybe water or alcohol. Then you repeat that in between shaking and the succussion steps. So you will get uh, 1C, 2C, 3C, 4C, uh, like that. C means 100 times uh, dilution. And it, could, it can go up to any number. Like uh, Samuel Hahnemann in his book, 
told uh, it's not uh, not advisable to go to beyond 30C because that's the maximum. And nowadays, uh, followers are now um, uh, going up to 200C and sometimes uh, uh, more than that. So what, what you can see is that after 12C, there, uh, there is no chance of a single molecule. There is no chance of a single molecule of the basic substance to be present. That's uh, known according to our Avogadro's uh, theory or chemistry you have learned. But it works, it cures, it cures. So where did, where did we arrive? That extreme dilutions beyond the Avogadro number are effective. More the dilution, more the curative power. We have, they have proof, a team of people are coming in front of you and telling that uh, the, the extreme dilutions are effective, it can be used for treatment, it has curative power, it is evidence through experience, and it is an accepted system in our society. And they tell worldwide, it is accepted worldwide and promoted by government. What else you need? But uh, you are in confusion. We started from somewhere and now we are in confusion that is the chemistry we learned wrong. Or is there any science in this? Because may, many people, including government, is promoting there should be some science. We started with our science, our understanding, and uh, we reached up to here. So this is in a direct conflict with the science we studied, that extreme dilutions are biologically active. So these are the things agreed by you. And now we are in deep confusion. Like whatever we talked about or whatever we thought about, like in, uh, scientific knowledge, scientific temper, and rationality, all these things are not useful here to solve this problem, to solve this problem. What is the, what, uh, how to so solve this conflict? So one way, is to the, uh, one way is to ask a scientist. So extreme dilutions are biologically active. Is it a dilution? You can ask a scientist. So this happened uh, earlier. I am uh, taking an example of uh, 1988. So the person is a uh, scientist. Uh, we can approach this, uh, means people approach this. Uh, uh, Jacobs Benveniste, this English uh, um, uh, means spelling, but in French, I think they um, pronounce Jack Benveniste. So he was a doctor. In fact, he, he was a doctor and turned scientist. He was into research. And uh, he is very famous for his invention on uh, platelet activating factor. Those biology students sometimes might have heard his uh, uh, name, especially in hematology and all. So he became the senior uh, research director in uh, the French biomedical uh, research agency, he called INSERM. And he worked on allergy and inflammation uh, immunology at that center. He was very active. And uh, during mid-1980s, uh, Ben Minister uh, studied the action of uh, dilute uh, immunoglobulin antibody on degranulation of uh, basophils. Basophils are uh, granulation uh, uh, means uh, um, uh, cells, granulated cells, which give immune response in blood. So he was studying the immune response, and uh, uh, finally he he arrived at a uh, arrived at a conclusion that even very dilute anti serum uh, acts against human basophil. So it is difficult to read. I'll, I'll read the gist that uh, um, this, uh, uh, what Ben Mills told is that basophils uh, could be activated to produce allergic response by exposure to antibody solutions so dilute that they uh, no longer contain any antibodies at all. Means dilution even up to 10 to the power of 120. So he got a publication in Nature, Nature the great, highest uh, graded uh, science journal all time. Even now, uh, its, uh, it's grading is in the top in the world. But as a, uh, while, means he, ha he has a, made a conclusion at the end of the paper. Actually, he, he has uh, some 12 uh, co-investigators in this uh, work. And all are very famous, means well-known people, a big team of people from France and uh, around. So water is having a mysterious memory. But what is this mysterious memory? He couldn't, couldn't explain, but he, uh, 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 he told in the paper that uh, the water molecules undergo some kind of uh, uh, orientation change and it memorizes the effect of uh, uh, immunoglobulin. That's why this effect occurs at uh, a dilution of uh, 10 to the power of 120. 
but the editor the actually his paper there was no uh, uh, conceptual mistakes or uh, procedure mistakes as a research paper it was valid that he has done one experiment he has got the results he has uh, presented the results in a convincing way and there was a conclusion but the editor of that journal nature john maddox he was a very uh, very powerful person at that time powerful in the kind of editing in among journals he told that this is a very unbelievable conclusion and he made a note he uh, means uh, uh, while reviewing itself paper reviewing itself he uh, contacted the editors uh, means other editors and uh, reviewers but everybody told there is no reason to hold the paper or delete means uh, uh, means uh, there is no reason for uh, not publishing but the conclusion is doubtful so uh, john maddox with his powers he published it with a note that is uh, unusual an uh, unusual note normally with the research papers uh, editors won't uh, interfere he made a note that there is no objective explanation of uh, these observations and he told that the readers of this article may share the incredulity of uh, the many referees who have read it with the kind collaboration of uh, professor benvenist nature has therefore arranged an independent investigators to observe the repetition of the experiment so condition for editor put, uh, put that we will publish but you have to that's a special case you have to prove it in your lab that even the extreme dilutions have biological effect that is against all the existing theories of physics and uh, means okay, physics chemistry and biology and a team was made team was made uh, not uh, exactly scientists but uh, maddox as an editor and uh, james randi i think many of you might have heard of uh, james randi he is a magician and a school dropout didn't learn science and he was a uh, one of the top grade magicians in the world and walter stewart who um, who is a kind of manipulation uh, investigator in uh, research he was famous for that so he they went to uh, actually li uh, in live they went to the lab it uh, everything was recorded they went to the lab of ben minister and ben, uh, ben minister told ben minister to uh, um, replicate his experiment they were staying in the lab and seeing how experiments are done and finally ben minister and his team failed to replicate what is uh, given in the paper then uh, maddox told him to withdraw the paper withdraw the research paper because of the uh, fault basic fault he, uh, he has done and uh, in reporting they were they were not uh, integrative in, uh, means in, uh, integral enough to uh, uh, present the, the true thing or they might have deluded that can be uh, agreed upon that uh, uh, some mistakes might have occurred then the normal way is to uh, retract the paper but penmins was not ready to retract the paper and maddox wrote a separate maddox and ian stewart wrote a special uh, report uh, on high dilution experiments a dilution and published in the nature in the next volume uh, means the next issue and dismissed for the first time in the history of nature journal editor dismissed a published paper that's uh, that's very uncommon he dismissed a published paper so what happened this is called benvenist state affair we started from simple um, dilution concepts and all so and uh, how scientists behaved in uh, behave in a lab so what happened is the whole research community this was became a big uh, um, uh, uproar in the uh, research community this made an uproar and all all of them wanted uh, uh, benvenist to resign but uh, insom has no reason to uh means uh, uh, sack him just because uh, whatever he has done he has done an experiment he has published the paper that's not a reason for uh, dismissing him and they didn't dismiss but later on they uh, closed down his lab and withdrawn all the support to him support even including salary because in the uh, western universities the scientists get salary from their their project it's funded project so he uh, was um, uh, cut from the salary and all those uh, provisions in that department the, his lab was closed and in scientific world he uh, scientific world closed doors to him that no paper will be published this is the kind of action scientist uh, community take for uh, imposters in science but he got a very good respectability from homeo circle because uh, this explains his concept may be wrong may be wrong but it explains homeopathy very well basic principle of homeopathy very well 
but uh, things didn't uh, stop there actually uh, uh, several people tried to replicate and uh, failed and they criticized uh, ben minis to uh, pro uh, proposing a kind of uh, deluded concept like memory of water he continued with the memory of water theory and in 1997 he came out of uh, means uh, this institution and started his independent uh, uh, company called digibio in 1997 and uh, his concept was that uh, biological uh, reactions if you add uh, certain things biological uh, cells and uh, other things in as uh, media and uh, do while doing experiment these interactions of cells will create some kind of uh, signals some signals which could be identified through coils and uh, it could be stored into computer you you may remember it is 1997 and it was the the time when uh, windows 3.1 was released uh, as early as that but his concept was it could be uh, means connected to computer and digitally converted to computer and uh, internet was at the uh, at its inception at, uh, at that time and he told that through email and some kind of file type ftp you can download the effect of that electromagnetic effect digital effect to your computer connect your device to computer put uh, the, the uh, sensor into water and that will create recreate the biological action that was his concept okay then the story i'll get down the story here that what what has happened that scientists can be deluded you have great expectation to scientists that uh, your questions will be answered questions on science or uh, i mean they are supposed to keep the scientific temper and uh, all those things we have discussed in the morning and in the beginning but no scientists were the scientists uh, uh, can be debunked and uh, no scientists in this uh, this affair benemis affair nobody could uh, tell benemis because all are um, equal people peers so we can't blame him in open platform and editors can uh, correct him that's all. only person who can interfere is that the editor who is going to rep means uh, reading his report and uh, who is supposed to publish it was the one only one and only person stood up and told that uh, scientist uh, has gone wrong he has, uh, that is to be corrected that was james randy and he was always this is only in one example right from the beginning he stood up for the keeping the dignity of science we should learn the, this uh, he he becomes one of the, my role models in the, in this aspect and uh, he, he was a canadian american uh, stage magician he has uh, written books you can read flame plum and all uh, and uh, scientific very active scientific uh, skeptics in fact all the activities what we are doing now now in uh, in essence uh, global and all it was started by uh, james randi 3 4 decades back and he has its own uh, groups and uh, on internet he has uh, um, jrf he has uh, uh, introduced uh, james randi education foundation and uh, csi cop uh, for investigating paranormal occult and supernatural claims he has instituted one uh, one organization anybody has superpowers reported to have superpowers they will go and just check them and uh, debunk them there were several fights and court cases uh, with him at that time and he's no more two years back uh, uh, he expired and what happened is that james randi came in front actually he was there in benvista fair in uh, checking his results and he told offered a wager of 1 million dollar 1 million dollar to anybody who convincingly proves the water memory nobody was there no takers all our scientists and they claim they have invented this thing that thing but uh, theory if you uh, make a full proof uh, uh, means a statement of your theory you will get a wager that was the uh, randi's promise but nobody was there okay story didn't end in fact story didn't end scientists continued to be deluded more scientists a decade later this happened in uh, 19 um, 89 and uh, 90 during that period later on one professor uh, one scientist madeline ennis from queens university belfast in ireland she made an interesting observation she was, she also was working on uh, basophils and uh, she uh, made some kind of um, uh, very dilute histamine uh, solutions and identified that very highly diluted homeopathic dilution we can call diluted uh, um, 
solutions are biologically active. She tried to communicate to journals, but uh, editors have the, uh, their uh, reservation that uh, earlier Ben Winstefer has happened, so scientists can go wrong. So they told, uh, you repeat that. You repeat the experiment. You send uh, back the samples, blinded. You, we call it blind, blinding, without telling which is the sample and which is distilled water and uh, which is the different concentrations. Everything is blinded. And the person doing the experiment may, will not be knowing what, sample, uh, what kind of solution he is dealing with. So he'll give the result. Then this was repeated with uh, uh, blinding, uh, uh, in blind test in four labs, and all of them proved right. Madeleine and News right, and uh, this was got published in 2001 in Inflammation Research. What happened? Randy came in between. Randy told, I'll give you $1 million. You qualify for $1 million. But, there is a but. But, she has to prove in front of him. Him means uh, he'll constitute a committee or whatever it is. His organization, JR, EF is there. So she can go there and prove it, then claim that one million dollar. This became an international issue. BBC took up. At that time, our uh, internet media or channels were not there. So only thing uh, operating was uh, television channels. So at that time, BBC has a good channel called, uh, popular science channel called Horizon. And the Royal Society uh, came in between and they funded this uh, particular uh, venture. And they designed, the, the, the Randy uh, I mean, entrusted a team to, uh, to make a, uh, means, uh, design a double bind study of this particular experiment. So that scientists cannot delude people uh, uh, who are really doing the experiment and who are re really evaluating, evaluating the experiment. Uh, then it was telecasted. Under, under camera they were doing the experiment in the lab. It was already edited and uh, just shown in uh, BBC uh, Horizon program in 2002. And all the, uh, all the tests, all the experiments done in four labs in Britain was uh, proved negative, proved negative. And obviously, our madam, Madeleine Ennis, has to go out of the university. And the rest of happened is that she joined in a homeopathy department in the next campus. OK, and again, I am coming to and things didn't end, at, end there. Again, again, Randy was there. I mean, editors were there. Everybody was there. And these uh, examples were there. But it didn't end. Now, big, big shots are coming in. Uh, one professor called, professor means he's a Nobel laureate. The Brian uh, Josephson, physics people might have studied Josephson Junction and all. For the invention, he got a Nobel Prize. Right from the beginning, when Ben Winstay uh, affair was uh, happening, he was the, on the side of Ben Winstay. And he invited Ben Winstay to his uh, uh, university. So, yeah, you come here, we can have good times, we can research on um, this kind of signals. And what he made a statement, uh, the, this Nobel laureate, uh, Brian Josephson, made a statement that uh, in a publication in 1999 that the memory of water in a homeopathic uh, solution has an electromagnetic signature. By that time, everything went to homeopathy, and homeopathy people were uh, adopting this, and many of us scientists believe that uh, we are giving explanations to homeopathy. Uh, it has a signature, and this can be um, I mean, captured with a copper coil, and digitized and transmitted by wire. Immediately, Randy caught him. Randy told, you, if you believe this, you try to prove, uh, prove in front of me. I'll give you $1 million. Okay, they, they, they didn't appear, so that, uh, the, the, I mean, that was uh, dissolved somehow. And uh, another big shot came into picture. Luke Montagnier, Nobel Prize uh, virologist, known for his discovery of HIV virus. So what he told is that uh, pathogenic bacteria and virus massively diluted uh, in water emit radio waves, which he can detect. But he didn't uh, uh, give, uh, give any proof or uh, anything, but this was a statement. And generally, this is called uh, Nobel syndrome. Nobel Prize uh, winners, Nobel laureates always believe that uh, they can talk anything, like our, uh, uh, our big people around. So, so I'm coming to end of this particular session. Like, uh, what is the lesson we learned from 
water memory uh, dilution. Like, uh, we hopefully looked upon scientists for establishing scientific temper and propagate rationality. But unfortunately, scientists themselves can get deluded and propose uh, irrational concepts. This is very strange, I think many of you may, may be thinking of this uh, uh, right now, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, very uh, uh, disappointing uh, situation. And who is responsible for, and wh why it is happening, I'll come to in the next slide, but who is responsible for blowing the whistle? Because all scientists are working in the same platforms, peers, but we can't uh, catch one, hold of one person uh, telling that he is uh, deluded. We can't do that, or other scientists. So journal editors can do, methodology experts can do, pseudoscience debunkers can do, as we have seen in the, the Ben Minister affair. And why these people are involved? I can, I'll get in the next slide uh, about a little bit about uh, scientific method, why this is happening. It may be curious for you to know that why scientists are getting deluded, because we know uh, how scientists, uh, uh, science behave. So behave in the sense, uh, what is the method of science? And it is that method which makes it different from philosophy. In fact, science de de derived out of philosophy long, uh, some 400 years back during the time of Galileo and Newton. That's in history you studied. And slowly, slowly, the method was clearly defined. If you, uh, if you follow a particular method, like, uh, um, uh, uh, like uh, our Isaac Newton uh, did, you make a method, observe something, the, the method is given here, like uh, uh, make observations, like apple is not I mean, falling on earth and uh, uh, moon is not falling. So then ask a question and form a hypothesis that uh, answers the question, then uh, make a prediction, test the prediction, analyze the result, then compare with hypothesis. If it is supported, okay, you can report the result. If it's not supported, again, go back to hypothesis and that cycle goes on. So this generates science, scientific theories and all. Uh, we studied uh, uh, Isaac Newton's uh, uh, hypothesis. And uh, he, the hypothesis he made, why apple is falling and uh, moon is not falling to earth. He made a hypothesis that any two bodies in the universe attract each other. We studied it, but uh, at uh, Newton's time, that was a ridiculous concept. No, nobody will agree. It's like Ben Minister, he would have been thrown out. But uh, he could prove that. He could prove that later on. That, that, uh, that's proved by Cavendish, the attraction in the, I mean, it was proved in the lab. But that was a, that was a path breaking concept, nobody, which nobody will believe. Why two things uh, in the universe should attract each other? Nobody knows. He himself didn't know. But his uh, theories proved that. He built up a huge theory and uh, explained uh, all the eclipses, eclipses and all, that was his success. His theory uh, uh, explained many phenomena in the sky, and therefore, this is uh, right. So that's the scientific method, and many of uh, the research, if there are any researchers uh, or students did uh, projects as a part of their PG, they know that they, they are learning the scientific method. So what is happening here? Anybody can ap adopt this method, but it depends your brain, your delusion you are going into. Sometimes if you are self-deluded, you will arrive at pseudoscience. If you are, if you are confident enough, you can go without uh, delusion, you will arrive at science. But the same method, I must tell you, the same method, if you follow the same method of uh, methodology of science, you will arrive at pseudoscience. Here, this will answer your long-standing question. Why pseudoscience are still prevailing? You are going to debunk pseudoscience, uh, astrology pseudoscience, then many things are listed in pseudoscience. And um, uh, you tell that so much research is going on in India, uh, in science. Many of you are, uh, have studied science. So everything is uh, in the realm of science, but still you can't uproot this uh, astrology or whatever pseudoscience is there. So this answers why it is. And now you may ask, what is the um, remedy for this? And I have to tell why, uh, this is why journal editors, methodology experts, and pseudoscience debunkers uh, uh, are into this uh, business, that uh, they, have to, they have to extract out the delusion out of this method. Actually, James Randi was doing that. James Randi was doing that, and uh, telling the scientists, 
to do research properly. And those who are not uh, familiar with uh, scientific research may, may ask how, whether uh, you, you people in, in my lab or the other labs in India, are, uh, whether you are doing properly or not. Uh, we are doing methods, but uh, uh, the delusion of a scientist, his own uh, delusion, we didn't, don't consider normally. We don't consider. So we believe that uh, scientists should go a, a, through a rational uh, uh, thinking and rational interpretation. And generally, editors will uh, look into that. If we go out of the way, normal editors will tell back that uh, this is not acceptable for us. But if I try to propose it uh, to the public and tell that I have invented some uh, certain certain things, very strange things and all, then uh, uh, debunkers has to come in just like James Randi. They have to do. Uh, they have to devise certain techniques to test the scientist himself, not scientific method. So scientific method will fail here. Definitely fail here to prove the, uh, prove, uh, expel the delusion. How to, how to avoid a delusion from scientific method? This is, uh, this is a question you may ask me. Something I will tell, uh, at the outset I must tell that uh, you can, um, the, uh, the methodology tells that I have an idea, go to lab, do accident. I am doing the accident or my assistant will be doing the accident. So personally, I'll be doing the experiment, and uh, I'll be getting the result. Single stretch, straight away, li uh, linear activity. There is no other, other confusion in that. Just I have to report to the editor once I get uh, good results and uh, a good interpretation. But I can go wrong, because I am a human being, and my assistant will be a human being. We have our own delusions. And many of the assistants coming into the lab uh, uh, in the morning, they do like this uh, in the, uh, the picture in front of their, uh, means there may be many pictures according to their uh, belief in front of their uh, table, under their uh, um, uh, table glass. So uh, those are the kind of people coming to, uh, coming to this. So how to guard them? Either I, either I have to guard them or they have to guard me, my own uh, uh, beliefs, or somebody else has to come in. So uh, the, the guarding point is some, uh, we can introduce blinding. Blinding in the sense, uh, if the person is taking one solution, biological solution from somewhere in the bottle, we can, uh, we can test it with another person, blinded. We won't tell that, uh, that person that which, uh, which uh, uh, solution he, uh, that person has taken. Another technician will be doing the experiment. And sometimes we'll double blind. We won't tell that person, or I may not be knowing doing, during, during the experiment what uh, that person is doing, and analysis uh, done by somebody else, and I'll be finally co compiling. So three people do not know each other. What are the uh, means ingredients of experiments uh, uh, we have taken, solutions or uh, cells or whatever it is we have taken, uh, core ingredients, and finally we'll compare the results. Or you can have people, same uh, means experiment done by multiple people separately and compare the uh, results. So that way we can uh, eliminate, slowly, slowly eliminate the kind of uh, delusions occurring in this. And uh, controlled experiment, controlled control in the sense uh, uh, you need not, uh, uh, that actually real controlling, it is actually comparison. That the technical word it means uh, comparison. If you are doing one, one experiment, you are measuring something, like Basel degranulation, quantifying certain degranulation occurs, you need two controls that uh, uh, one system nearby him that which will tell, uh, which will give 100% activity, 100% positive activity, that's called a positive control, and another set of uh, experiment which gives no activity, that is called a negative control. So unless otherwise you have positive and negative controls, you can't define your uh, credibility of your result. So I think you, uh, roughly you might have understood where Ben Winstay has gone wrong and how James Randi corrected that. So after this correction, in fact, I, in the science history, I, I could uh, identify uh, pr primarily James Randi, who has introduced this deliberately, coming into this. But in medical field, they, they, they are doing that, medical and uh, um, uh, the, uh, this uh, <coughs> public health studies. They are uh, deliberately doing, uh, means, uh, method development. They do their method, or own method development with the blinding and controls and statistics. Statistically, we have to prove that, uh, because individual data may lead you to somewhere, so we have to do a lot many experiments. If it is a human being or data collection from the society, you have to do a lot many uh, means efforts or uh, through statistically, you have to ensure where your result uh, lies. 
So one question we didn't answer. I think till now you, you, you got many, many answers or answers for your, many of your questions, why pseudoscience occurs, why in science the, there are some confusions uh, of uh, various inventions and uh, all those things. And how scientists get deluded and what is the remedy of uh, that delusion. Now one big question we didn't answer, we, which we left earlier, that extreme dilutions uh, beyond Avogadro numbers are effective. So we'll try to uh, try to answer that. Uh, without that, it's incomplete. That's why. So I'll take uh, two more slides and I'll uh, give the stage to my uh, colleague. Uh, here, what what they they had been doing is that uh, um, uh, hundred times, hundred uh, hundred multiples they, they they are diluting, and beyond uh, uh, twelve C, there is no single active molecule in that. And we are asking the question, how high dilutions cure disease? Okay, you are asking that question. But actually, what, what is happening there? Dilutions after 12C are simply water. Simply water. And this question is wrong. This is the question you should have asked. How distilled water cures uh, their disease? Every, in uh, sci uh, the, the scientific temper and all, we always uh, tell that you should ask questions. And uh, generally students and other people will understand that we will ask doubts. It's not doubt. Question means you think and you find out the flaw or the, the real, um, the real uh, underlying fact and question that. Not like asking doubt. That is not questioning. So this is the right question. And uh, high dilutions means distilled water. Then distilled water should uh, cure disease. And now you, you yourself may laugh why I uh, support this question, how distilled water cure disease. Anybody will give distilled water for uh, as a medicine. It is there. We are giving. We are giving. Like double-blind placebo control studies in drug trials. I think in drug invention we are doing, I think uh, many of you may be knowing drug uh, means proving. I mean, uh, uh, this uh, drug trials, drug proving is in uh, homeopathy. In uh, actual modern drugs, they are testing in humans. At a stage, they have to test in humans. There, they have to, the, the, there are a lot many factors which control uh, the healing, means outcome. So you are going with a the disease. There are a lot many factors which uh, helps the cure. If uh, you take 100 patients, there are many, many, many uh, factors. Each one are experiencing. So if you give a drug to 100 people, they are getting cured, but uh, many factors might have uh, um, means influenced that. We do not know. We can't, uh, we can't uh, um, chart each and every confounding factors and uh, uh, do a statistics. It is impossible. So what we do is that uh, we give a dummy drug, dummy thing, which has no drug action, like distilled water. In, in most of the cases we give, uh, in placebo control trials, we give distilled water for uh, about 100 people and uh, actual medicine for 100 people and we will be blinding which one has got which medicine we don't disclose and double blinding the nurse will be blinded with uh, the information that she doesn't know uh, which one she has given uh, in which medicine medicine or uh, placebo and healing is observed with the water in every experiment we can uh, observe a certain percentage of people are curing with uh, just with the distilled water so that is there and uh, don't doubt that this, uh, whether this happened or not, it is there. And uh, uh, coming to, uh, as a, uh, I should not miss this, because in homeopathic medicine, this was tested. This, these were tested under double-blind placebo control clinical trials. Uh, in Europe, several, several tests are already, experiments are already done uh, since the last 30 years or so. Um, <clears throat> and uh, th these were funded by uh, the, the homeo um, organization themselves, because they wanted to prove the effect of homeopathy, the positive effect of homeopathy, so that they can get uh, government uh, uh, means uh, approval or uh, uh, funding from uh, means uh, uh, inclusion in uh, insurance. So in all the experiments, almost all the experiments, homeo treatment were found no better than water. And the Lancet in 19, uh, means, uh, 2005, August 27 issue, had featured a meta-analysis. Meta-analysis means a combined analysis of different trials, and they'll uh, make a conclusion. They took 110 trials, and they made a plus release that homeopathy is no better than placebo. I wanted to tell the other side that in 110 trials, water has won. Water has won, but uh, and homeopathy uh, drug was defeated. Now I'm coming to the last one. 
placebo treatment. Anybody has uh, practically done placebo treatment? And details of placebo uh, will be uh, elaborated by my colleague in the next uh, um, uh, presentation after this slide. Uh, Dr. Isaac Jennings, I don't know whether you have heard this name, but uh, those who follow naturopathy might have heard uh, his name because he was a, uh, he was a forefather for uh, this naturopathic uh, approach. And he was giving bread pills and famous for bread pills and colored water. Uh, he, he, he lived in Connecticut, uh, born and brought up and uh, practiced. He was a doctor in orthodox medicine during Hanuman's time. At that time, modern medicine was not there. It was uh, uh, an olden uh, style of uh, uh, allopathic uh, treatment. Allopathic means that word was used by Hanuman. And uh, that is uh, generally called uh, orthodox medicine in uh, Europe and uh, uh, America. He studied it and he was unsatisfied and he wanted to um, uh, stop that practice because very cruel things were done uh, on uh, uh, patients uh, by doctors. And uh, it was not very he was not very comfortable with uh, those uh, treatments uh, done then. Uh, in uh, 1822, in, at that time, there was an incident. Uh, it was in his biography somewhere I read that uh, uh, he was actually he was a, a very kind of philanthropic uh, man, doctor, and uh, he treated free of cost. He go to patient and just give advices. At a certain stage, he stopped his uh, medicine, but he used to uh, used to advise patients. So one day he was going uh, through uh, uh, his uh, countryside somewhere in, in Connecticut and saw a man in front of his uh, thatched hut. He was a farmer, that uh, field is there and he was doing, uh, he was a farmer and he, he was lying there almost unconscious. So, so uh, um, uh, Jennings went and uh, 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 pulled him up and uh, asked what has happened. And it was, uh, um, he has he heavy fever and he told, uh, three, four days I am having heavy fever and I am down with uh, my disease. And the doctor, please help me. Then uh, Jennings told, I stopped giving medicines. No, I am not giving medicines. And uh, um, your disease could be cured by, you go to some kind of uh, uh, better, uh, better treatment, don't go to this kind of orthodox medicine. There is one person, the uh, year is 1822. But, uh, Hanuman, Hanuman's lifetime, and Hanuman proposed his treatment in 1796 onwards, and 1810, Hanuman's treatment was very popular throughout Europe, and then it went to America. So he was talking in that premises. He told the patient, that farmer, that you go to the other side of the city, there is a person doing a very, uh, very interesting treatment without uh, much uh, chemicals. So you can go there. That is called, he is called a homeopath. You can go there and uh, uh, get his uh, treatment. Then after one week, Jennings came, same, uh, same route, and uh, just he looked at the uh, thatched hut. So this man got up, and he was ready to go for uh, uh, his uh, farming activity. Then he asked, hey, what happened? So your disease was cured with homeopathy, no? Then told, no, no, doctor, I, did, I didn't, uh, went out of my house. In fact, I, I didn't have, first thing, I didn't have money, and second thing, I didn't have the, 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 the energy to get up. What I did is I drank water. When I, uh, means, uh, uh, I, I am too much tired, I take water. And if I'm hungry, I'm taking some kind of bread, uh, the, the sort of crumbs, uh, bread means they make uh, um, uh, with uh, wheat or uh, <coughs> corn flour, they make some kind of uh, small uh, bread-like thing, means cook uh, bread-like thing. So I was taking that and just uh, um, uh, sleeping over here. Then on the third day and fourth or fourth day, I got up. Then uh, Jennings got a good idea that uh, this kind of bread pills and uh, colored water it will be a good uh, dummy uh, drug. He, he understood that it has uh, nothing to do with uh, uh, treatment. But he started giving that. And he became a very famous healer in Connecticut. Very famous healer, Isaac Jennings. And later on, he, he relinquished that. He wrote two books, Tree of Life and uh, Medical uh, Reform. And uh, he was very successful in placebo therapy. But later on, he left that. 
because he understood that this is not effective for everything. And several patients were coming to him. He, were, he was giving blood pills, this pills and um, uh, colored water, and they were getting cured. And finally, on one fine morning, he told, all the years I had been giving this kind of placebos, like they were simply br uh, blood pills uh, containing no medicine, and water, just water containing no, no curative agents. So I was doing that, and uh, the whole uh, medical community was against him, and they wanted to penalize him the, for cheating patients. But patients was were all were happy, and they were with him, and he somehow he escaped from uh, the, the, the um, means uh, <coughs> uh, legal actions. But he went in an in, in entirely different uh, direction. That uh, he himself told placebos are not uh, effective for all diseases. So it uh, you better you change lifestyle. That is called orthopathy. He made a kind of uh, um, uh, recipes for better lifestyle, and uh, uh, with uh, which with which one person can keep their health without medicines. That was his approach. It is called orthopathy. And following orthopathy, several uh, several built up was there in a lifestyle, and that contributed to the evolution of naturopathy. I have given many, many, many inputs in a single talk. And I must uh, stop here thanking you for listening, patient listening. And I invite uh, uh, Dr. Arif Hussain to give the, the, the second part of uh, the, the, this talk. And sufficiently, you might under, um, have understood what is the thread in this uh, uh, the presentation, which is implicit. So I can conclude with uh, uh, James Randi's famous uh, quote. Those who believe without reason cannot be convinced by reason. You, you should not uh, discuss any reason to the person who believes without reason. That was his style. And throughout, uh, he was uh, uh, means uh, uh, holding that, uh, the, that kind of approach better than any scientist in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manaj Komar. So that was a very insightful uh, speech.